episode of Jury Saturday. Uh, I am joined. I don't normally have guests, but today I have a guest. Uh, he is not only somebody that you are well aware of, but uh, you listen to no other show or, or anything else, but he's also a good friend. I don't know. There's no way that I can list all the ways that we are affiliated <laughs> without sounding gay. So, uh, a friend, a confidant, <laughs> co-worker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Brett, uh, the Amtrak of Roundsville. Because uh, then I didn't say hetero life mate. Once you That's get, to, I was well, also once you get to roommate, like yeah. it's like, all right, well these guys are gay. Right, clearly. Uh, Brett is joining me uh, today uh, because I don't know. I I figured hell uh, instead of Brett sitting there in the living room playing iPad games while I yell <laughs> in my room conspicuously, why don't we bring him in for the fun? So. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, obviously, the the holidays are in full swing. And to give people an update real quick on how we began the show last week, which was, if you did not, we're not here to watch it, it was uh, me screaming about the fact that $3,000 um, had been stolen from <laughs> me uh, in a credit card fraud scheme uh, between Hagerstown, Maryland, and Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, that has been refunded. So... I have the money back, and now the big question is, maybe it'll be a running theme here, is where am I going to give $3,000 in charity? I'm glad that's the direction you went in. I thought the running theme was that you get ripped off of $3,000 every week. No, no, no. That would be uh, that would <laughs> that'd be like an open challenge. Hey, can you think you can rip me off, pussies? Huh? Challenge accepted. <laughs> exactly. As I have robbed blind. <laughs> uh, so so there we go. Um, we're we're going to figure that out, and we'll talk about that going forward. But I definitely want to do something funny. Uh, we're, I mean, do something good, but also something – the funniest possible thing I can do with $3,000 for charity, I want to do. That's the goal. Uh, and this is all money that was derived from the Diamond Club book. This is – my cut after our um, big party at Dragon Con, after buying books for everybody, stuff like that. So uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. I do want to begin the show today by talking about something uh, a little bit slightly more somber. Uh, obviously, there was a big thing, uh, a big news story that's been all over the place. It was the shooting at an, ele uh, an elementary school in uh, Connecticut yesterday. 28 dead, I believe 20 of them were children. There's a lot of angles to talk about this, and I'm going to talk about really the only one that I think I have any level of expertise on, and it's not the political one, and it's even not the media analysis one. Um, it's how people reacted yesterday, and I'm not saying it's necessarily a negative thing, although I do think that there were negative elements to it, but but Brett, were you were you on social media when uh, this happened? No, briefly. I was running a game in uh, Palo Alto, so I missed a lot of the early stuff. But that doesn't mean uh, if at any point you were on social media yesterday, you weren't still bombarded with pretty much the same levels. Now, if you were to describe, let's say somebody comes in from a, a land without internet, mm -hmm. okay, uh, and they ask you, well, how did people react? To this, we are obviously in an unprecedented era of being able to share our feelings in an unlimited and broad nature. Mm -hmm. How did people react? How would you describe? And, and obviously, this is all shaped by because I hate it when people are like people on Twitter are going crazy, and it's like, <clears throat> yeah, maybe, but also, we're, you're very niched yeah. in, in Twitter. You are following your followers, you know. Uh, so anyway, how would how would you describe? What was your sphere like? Uh, well, the way I tried to describe it yesterday was like it's it's this really inappropriate race to be the first guy to say something profound or touching or smart. And in that race to be the first yeah. guy to say that smart thing, instead you get 100 billion people all saying really stupid things uh, in the hopes that they're going to tap that, that one vein. Uh, but they're not thinking, they're racing. Yeah. And And... <sighs> I think here's here's my point. Number one, there there's there's a a question about the pipes for which we get this information. Facebook and Twitter are IVs to our souls. 
you know. Normally, we have feelings, we have thoughts, we react to them, and, and we can kind of manage them and edit them to a certain point. Some people <laughs> may be better at that than others. Uh, but when something like this happens, it's hard because not, not only do people have unfettered access, but also it's such a gigantic thing that there's nobody on the side, except somebody pointed out the Westboro Baptist Church, who's going to say this is a good thing. You know, and even them, you know, there's their, they have their, their circuitous, is that the word, circuitous, logic to get there. You know, that, that they think it's a, it, it's a good, uh, whatever, I'm not even going to waste time explaining how they operate. Um, but we blame Although clearly things. how they operate works, if even you're willing to talk about it briefly. Well, yeah, I mean, because it is interesting. I mean, like, in, in a logical, you know, in, in a let's explain how these people operate, they have their own logic. They're like a science fiction movie. A great science fiction movie. They have their own rules, and they do stick by them. Yeah. You know, it just brings us to a bizarre place. Um, yeah, and not to say, I'm not saying they're not absolute cunts. They are. They're cunts. Anybody who does the things that they do are terrible people. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying that, like, it's not blind scattershot nonsense. Like, they have their reasons for doing things as bizarre as they are. But in terms of what happened yesterday, nobody's going to say this was great. Everybody is a big ball of emotion, and they are going to talk about things for which they know how to talk about. Because to talk about what happened is impossible. It's unfathomably sad, and there's you can't yell at somebody, and that's all we want to do, is if this guy was alive, he would be the trial of the century, yeah. if we got him. And we would pay attention to him in the way that we pay attention to lunatics like the, the uh, David Berkowitz and Charlie Manson and shit like that. Like the way we, we have this weird fascination with them because we, A, want to continue to see them punished, and B, we wonder how a brain can get to this. So... Which brings us to what was discussed yesterday, which was, by and large, the biggest thing that I think people wound up pooling on was gun control, and that has continued today. People want to talk a lot about gun control. Now, I, I, you know, in, in my let, let me ask you this: if I were to tell you that the best way to have this conversation was to just mandatorily ban everybody for 72 hours. <laughs> would you agree with me or would you disagree with me? Do you think that there's a value in people being, what I would say is clearly hysterical, in, the, not, in the immediate aftermath? I would go you one better. I would say you don't need to ban people from talking about it for 72 hours. You need to force people to think about it for 72 hours before they're allowed to speak. Yeah. Uh, and now... I would say also that this is something that's not just on social media. You know, I was reading columns today that, to me, were, were obviously very, very hysterical, but they were hugely popular because they tapped into the zeitgeist of what was going on. You know, there, there's one, a, a column from, and I forget his, his last name, but a columnist for The New Yorker that basically says, if you support what, what they described, and I'll try to be fair, as fair as I can to their words, if you support the NRA's definition, now obviously they have a very negative view of what the NRA is, uh, if you support their definition of the Second Amendment, you are culpable for the death of these children. Now, I personally think that's unfair. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's a little unfair. It's massively popular. I've seen it retweeted three or four times, like you said, in terms of the well, uh, you know, you want to be the person who is, who is, you know, something that's retweeted. People are sending this around. And I think that if it was not written with social media in mind, it certainly is gaining a exposure because it speaks to a common thought that is being spread around on social media right now. Right. It was definitely written with the idea that it should spread. And social media is the yeah. way things spread now. I mean, that's the same for any newspaper or article ever written, but still, that's... That's the reason it was written quickly, that's the reason it was put out there, and that's the reason it is so inflammatory. 
Now, one of the things that was also a big story about what happened yesterday and has been talked a lot about on social media is the relative facts of the case. Um, not the case. What happened? And specifically, where media members went with certain things. And, uh, for example, the name that we all knew yesterday. If you only read about this shit yesterday, and now you're coming online and you're like, oh, I want to find out about it, you might be surprised to find out that the name of the killer has changed from Ryan to Adam. The reason <laughs> that is, is because Ryan Lanza had nothing to do with this. It was his brother, Adam, that did it. But all yesterday, we heard that the killer lived in Hoboken, New Jersey, was named Ryan, and his Facebook photo was all over the place. Uh, and that was apparently because, I don't know, I guess the Adam kid had one of his brother's identification cards on him or something like that. Uh, but you've been a big fan of, of the newsroom, right, which is something that, that has dealt mm -hmm. with these themes a lot. Yeah. And, and you saw I saw a lot of comparisons to that uh, online, but... You know what is what is your reaction? You know, do you do you take this stuff seriously? Have you have you found yourself at, ha, after watching the newsroom thinking about that stuff more or less? Uh, I may yeah, I may spend a little more time thinking about the whys and the hows that the news spreads. But in a situation like this, I'm very cognizant of the idea that I can't do anything about it, and so I was pretty absent from social media once I saw that that's all anything. Uh, that's all that was happening yesterday. It was. It didn't behoove me to uh, spend any time trying to understand why people were saying what they were saying, saying, or whether or not what they were saying was even correct. Because yeah. it likely wasn't. Yeah. And turned out to actually to actually be not in fact correct. Uh, there was anger, man. Yeah. A lot of anger. A lot of just and 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 I don't know if it was constructive anger. But then again, I don't know if it's supposed to be constructive. I don't know if, if in that moment, if anything constructive can come out of that hysteria. The one thing that I would disagree with is that, you know, you have a lot of people that were talking about staying mad. Capture this feeling, stay mad. Which sounds a lot to me like a wild mob. <laughs> like... If you're not mad tomorrow, how are you going to sharpen your pitchfork tonight? Exactly. And, and again... I don't think that this is, and I don't know, I, I, I'm curious to hear from you guys in the chat room right now, but like, do you think that this time is constructive? Do you think that these hysterical elements are something that we can use or build upon? Because I don't know if when they're negative, like obviously there was a lot of talk after 9-11 about like, well now we're all one America, you know? And then you had people, you know, it's like, afterwards, like, oh, I'll remember the peace after 9-11, and like, now <laughs> it's gone. It's never there. I mean, like, we're all hysterical. We were in shock. We are crying. You know, like, it was never like we all came to an agreement, like, well, now we're, we're unhyphenating America. And like, <laughs> you know, the Klan guy comes and hugs the Hindu, like, you yeah. know, that, that didn't happen. You know, well, actually, there was something reassuring about how yesterday it was more like, yeah, we're still two Americas. Well done, guys. <laughs> Way to not move forward in any way. Well, and here's the only other problem, and this is the, as deep as I'm going to get about the, the gun control issue, is I am all for hearing more about possible gun control stuff. What bothers me about it is when people talk about it like it's just a very simple law. Yeah. You know? Like, you would just say, like, because even abortion, as controversial as abortion is, that's a simple law. They're illegal. You can't do them anymore. We're now banning that. If you were to be a pro-life person, that's what you want, is the fine, and, and the only thing we ever argue about is, you know, rape or incest, stuff like that. These very, very clear niches. Otherwise, the fix that some would like to say is just, it's not allowed to be done. If you're a doctor, you'll be stripped of your license, and if you're found to do it, you'll go to jail. With guns, like, is the question we never sell a gun anymore? Is the question that we now confiscate every gun? 
is the question that anybody who is found to have a gun, what do we do to people who legally have guns now? Do we, do we take them away? You know, do we force them to sell it back? Like, it's not an easy thing. Well, the more important thing is, well, I mean, obviously there's a route, but even if you said, all right, I have this great idea for a very simple gun control law, it's still going to take years to uh, disassemble the multiple gun control laws that every state has right now. Yeah. And not only that, but, like, look at the fact that there is industries, an entire entire industries based around the concept of personal firearms between, you know, not only just the sale of them, but also hunting and, and you know, various other recreational sports. Like, there are elements to that, that that would need to be scaled back or disassembled, and the government would officially be saying, congratulations, you are now can't do this. You are now a drug dealer. Um, and so it bothers me when it comes down to, hey, you stink. You, your blood's on your hands if you think that there's, there should be guns in this country. Which, listen, you, let's talk about what we're doing. Let's talk about what's effective in, in, in curtailing it. But I think to point to other countries and say, well, just do what they're doing. I mean, the cat's kind of out of the bag here, you know. It's a lot of guns on the street. Um, True Safer says, how about this? We watched the ammo. Most of those mass shootings ammunitions were purchased in large quantities quickly. You could easily watch the ammo and at the very at least, at the very least, knock on some doors, right? I mean, I don't know. That sounds fine to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're like, hey, I want enough ammo that I could take down a town, like, yeah, maybe you should have to get a call. Like when somebody, you know, when you, whenever you spend like three like expensive things on your credit card and they call you and they're like, hey, uh, did you just spend all this money? <laughs> I don't have... know. That seems a little strange because, uh, well, as someone who comes from a very long line of rednecks and has bought ammo several times, uh, I feel like you only ever buy it in large enough quantities to kill lots of people. Not that that's what you're buying it to do. But you're buying it in bulk because it's expensive. Right, yeah. And I mean... Best case scenario, you're buying a box of, what, like 50 rounds. Uh, that's still 50 dead people, potentially. I mean, or it could be 50 holes in a piece of paper. So let's say, all right, all right Alt, Alt Nerd says, but where do you draw the line? 50 or 100 rounds or, or something more? Like, well, I don't know. How about 2,000? <laughs> if you're buying 2,000 rounds, and I don't know whether this guy – and that's the other thing is that, you know, when, when you look at what happened yesterday, I think – it's it's legitimate to say, let's look at the gun control laws in Connecticut. Because if your answer is more laws, let's look at how these laws are working and look at if we do want to do more laws, what they are going to do and whether or not these are working. Because if the point of these gun control laws were to stop somebody shooting somebody, they obviously failed yesterday. Would they fail more if now the problem was way bigger? Um, apparently, wow, a lot of hunters here. <laughs> a, lot, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people who talk about buying a large uh, large scale ammunition. Maybe that's I, I should sponsor the show. Well, that's the thing. Ammo. I really do support what these guys are saying in here. In that, fifty rounds is not a lot of rounds by any stretch. That's like if you're going out again, long line of rednecks to go shoot cans with your family. You're definitely going to buy more than fifty rounds. You shot cans with your family. Who doesn't in the mountains? I grew up in the mountains, well, bro. I, I'm saying I'm not accusing. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm asking I'm I'm asking for uh, a, a you know to illuminate me. I grew up in the suburbs of very <laughs> flat lands. Yeah, absolutely. We like I where I lived, we would walk out our back door and shoot guns. Like we, I mean, we would also go to like a rifle range. Like I've been trap shooting and skeet shooting dozens of times in my life. Yeah. I mean, it's a fun pastime. There's nothing wrong with it as long as you're not pointing at people. There's a lot sure. to be learned about guns. What would you say the biggest lesson for you personally growing up about guns was? Like, What was the thing that you took away as an impressionable youngster? I think like shooting things like, like cans or something as opposed to paper targets is really enlightening because you see firsthand how much damage a tiny piece of metal can do. Yeah. And uh, that... That makes it very easy to wrap your head around. Don't let this get pointed at me or anyone else I love. Yeah. 
Oh, man. P. Delahenty says, uh, Brett was like Carl on The Walking Dead. <laughs> but I, I do think that there is, and, and like you said, Groove in the Mountains, long line of rednecks. There's a fundamental cultural difference between how people in the city look at guns and people in the non-cities look at guns, the rest of the country. And for me, and I think I, and, uh, this was a point brought up to me by a friend of mine, uh, I think that the basis of this is the response time for potential law enforcement. That when you are in a small town outside of a city where law enforcement, you know, the police force is not gigantic, you know, late at night when bad things happen, someone tries to do harm to you or your family, it will take them longer to get there. And that's where having your own stopping power, to me, as somebody who has not been in that situation, I can empathize with that idea. That if it's like, it's going to take somebody from wherever, you know, the, the cop car is then, if there's a couple cop cars out on the road at 1 o'clock in the morning, and I hear somebody getting ready to screw around, you know, to break in my house, then they're not going to get there. And now it's either I let this guy do whatever he wants, if he has a weapon, or I would like to have a weapon to defend myself. So, I don't know. I wish I were joking when I said, uh, growing up, mountain lions were a much bigger concern than robbers. Really? <laughs> I mean, they weren't a huge concern. But, like, if, like there were a reason to, if there were a reason to have a gun in the house, it was a mountain lion, not a robber. So what would – how would mountain lions fuck with you? Like, they, would they, like, paw at the door? Like – No, they wouldn't come – like, they lived on the same mountain we lived on. You can – like, they are creepy, dude. They – have yeah. you ever heard a mountain lion call? It's like a woman screaming bloody murder. Can you do the call? I, I could scream like a woman, like, who is being bloodily <laughs> murdered. <laughs> so. Yeah. Redneck family. <laughs> All right, no, but I'm I'm curious about this mountain lion thing. So yeah. like, they, like, do they eat? Like, are they like deer? Do they like eat shit outside of your house? Like, no, they're they, carnivores. They don't they don't come down and eat your carrots. Well, it's I don't. Like... I, listen again. I don't know. I don't uh, know about this. No, they eat. Uh, at at one point, uh, all of our cats were gone. We can only assume thanks to a much bigger cat. Wow. Uh, yeah. So they'll eat like they'll eat their own. Well, it's not their own. It's a tiny little house cat versus, like, a 200-pound <laughs> lion. But we don't eat, like, midgets. <laughs> We're not like, hey, you're smaller than me. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Maybe. Birch. Simon Birch. <laughs> I don't know. Can I mention oh, that? I don't know either. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, okay. But, like, so, so they would go and they'd eat <laughs> And I'm I sure feel like you're hung up on this. There is a there was a carnivore. A there was a giant thing. carnivore that lived on the same mountain we lived Ladies on. Ladies and gentlemen, the chat room, do me a favor. <laughs> like, let me know in the chat room whether or not you want me to ask more questions about this mountain lion problem for which plague the Roundsville family. It wasn't a huge problem. We were just prepared to in have case. a gun. Well, okay, but we had guns before there was a mountain lion problem too. It wasn't like that. Yeah. We didn't go out and purchase special mountain lions. Even more bad. So there was a time before, like there was like, there's, like the, there's the old BM. The the old tale. Like like, well, we used to be able to let you go outside. <laughs> that was before the lions. <laughs> oh man. Uh like we would still go out like like during the day it's not like they're it's the tried and true story about how wild animals are more scared of you than you are of them, but that doesn't mean they can't get really close to you. Probably not scared of cats. Noticing. No, definitely not scared of cats. Eating those motherfuckers like Alf. Yeah. <laughs> ah, all right. <laughs> Brett, did you have to fight off other versions of Mac OS X too? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Were there any snow leopards? <laughs> no. Uh, all right. So, so there we go. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about today was Christmas shopping, because I'm bad at it. Mm -hmm. How would you describe it? On a scale of 1 to 10, Brett, where would you rank yourself as a Christmas shopper? Factor in the time you spend thinking about it, the mm -hmm. time you spend doing it, mm -hmm. the quality, the reaction to the presents. Like, like, what do you think you are on a scale of 1 to 10? Oh, man. Um, I feel like I, I usually knock it out pretty quickly and mostly with online shopping, but not without way too much overthinking. I spend entirely too much time staring at pages full of things 
trying to imagine how much the person would actually use it. Because, I mean, also you know that I come from a world of, like, need, not a world of <laughs> Wild <life. laughs> animals. <laughs> All right, good, good. I'm glad we're still talking about mountain lions. All uh, I can think of is just, like, <laughs> like a, a very picturesque kind of family situation. Everyone's sitting, kids, you and your sister are playing a board game, your dad and your mom. Like, <laughs> Dad's reading a magazine. Your mom's yeah. doing something. Uh, and then all of a sudden, literally, like, through the window, geez, you're such a mad city lion, folk. Mad <laughs> lion. <laughs> or no, sorry. The, <laughs> apparently the, the woman screaming bloody <laughs> murder. <laughs> all four family members whipping out a piece. Geez, 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 taking it down. Your world is not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is what happens. This is your mysterious mountain lore. Like you know, <laughs> the beginning of a story. Yeah, we, mountain lions were a bigger problem than, than criminals. Anyway, well, of course they're criminals. We're like 45 minutes from a grocery <laughs> store. You wouldn't even be able to find your house if you wanted to rob from us. You don't think that, like, maybe, like, <laughs> there's not, like, like mountain rapists, like... <laughs> You actually, you know what? We didn't see the lions all that often. It could have been a mountain rapist up there, and that could be the screaming woman. Like, there could be a bunch of manhandled women just laying all over the mountain we used to live on. How do I know? You don't see them. They don't come crashing through the window, the and you don't whip lion, out your gun. The mountain lion's roar is actually like, roar! <laughs> Grr. Grr. Sorry, guys, we were trying to let you know about that mountain rapist. <laughs> Got another one! Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Oh, that's uh, uh, Christmas shopping, Christmas huh? Christmas shopping, yeah, go ahead. All right, so Christmas um, shopping. So, like, I'm a big fan of trying to buy things that people need as opposed to things that people want, and that requires way more effort in a world where people, by and large, have everything they could possibly need. We're, yeah. we're like a society of, like, overconsumption, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's really difficult for me in the planning stages. Is it but overconsumption like, once I'm set, it's or, like, like, or, like... Just rapid consumption. Like, I feel like like we're constantly, like, it's not like we can't justify the need for other stuff. And we're certainly, we average more than other civilizations, right? Even in, like, today's era. Mm -hmm. But, like, I don't know. I don't know why I get hung up on that. So, <laughs> all right, you're, uh, you feel like you think about it a lot, but then you, you usually nail it. Yeah, well, once, I, once I'm done thinking, I pull the trigger, I don't mess around. Like, it's just time to go shopping, get the shopping done, and leave. All right. Put a percentage on all the shopping you have to do for 2012, and then tell me how much of that you have done. How uh, by percentage? I have, how much? I have like an, probably 98 percent. Like anything else I buy from now on is going to be like something where I think of it between now and Christmas and realize, oh, that would have been an even better idea. But I you have add that to the list. But you have your your main. Yeah, I'm I'm done enough right now. Gotcha. You could just you could fall into a coma yeah. after a mountain lion attacks you. <laughs> you could be whisked away <laughs> with the the, the, the the mountain rapists. We don't even have that place anymore. We live much further down. Oh, you've been there. You've been I there. Yeah, 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 yeah. We live now. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, it's like just a it's more guy. it's just coyotes and deer down there. He's you don't just, have the. the he's just want, he just like ambles up <laughs> and he's just like, well, I was just looking for a place to stay the night. You know when it late is. <laughs> oh, no. No, he's oh, just, oh, he's not the mountain rapist. No, he's he is the mountain rapist. rapist but oh. he starts off, and then he's like, oh, just a kindly mountain drifter. Of course you can sleep here. Also, no such thing as kindly <laughs> mountain drifters. <laughs> Have you ever met a mountain drifter? Do we no. mountain drifters? No. Why not? Who drifts in the What an awful place to drift. I mean, cities are an awful place for homeless people to live. Well, they still get, like, handed stuff all the time. If you're a mountain drifter, you either are literally killing the mountain lion to eat it, or you're just wandering around and falling asleep under a tree, wishing that you had a hamburger and 20 cents from a stranger that walked by on his way to work. Why isn't that the solution to the mountain lion problem? Like, you know how they'll, like, introduce... Feed them homeless people? No, what is wrong with you? No. Well, I mean, listen. No, I'm not saying feed them homeless people. I'm saying, listen, uh... <laughs> You go to a survivalist. Like, you know how, like, they'll, they'll introduce... So we're training the homeless people to live in the wild? Follow me. <laughs> All right. You know how they'll introduce species, like, into nature to combat another species, right? Yeah. And let's suspend the fact that many times this has proven to be a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll, let's they'll... ignore for the fact that this has never worked out for the best. <laughs> 
But let's understand it as a strategy. All right. All right? So you go to some survivalists. <laughs> it's not enough that it's an actual bad premise. It's a bad premise founded on a lifetime of bad ideas. Follow me. So you get these survivalists. And you put them in areas with high mountain lion populations. And you say, listen, here's the only thing. You can't have a home. You have to live. You're a killing machine 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then, I don't know, like, we'll take care of your family or something. Well, your family. So they have a family, but they're not, it's not, it doesn't behoove them. No, to right, so get you away. got a bunch of lonely, weird drifters that are like, like, yeah, I never did amount to much. <laughs> All I ever wanted to I do only was have kill one animals. Kill. <laughs> it's like, but I can take care of my pa, my ma, my cousin Sissy. <laughs> and they just airdrop them in to where these uh, uh, these mountain lions are. I, I don't even know where to start uh, <laughs> as to, like, which part of that is the worst up part of the idea. <laughs> it's just it's so many shades of awful. You don't think it will work, though? There aren't a ton of mountain lions. There's, like, one per, like, 15 square miles or something one, like that. you need one dude. Well, this is going to be a very small federal program. <laughs> <laughs> if this is another entitlement issue... Thanks, Obama! <laughs> um, so there we go. We, we aired, all right, Christmas shopping. <laughs> I would be the opposite. I would all say right. that... I am terrible at it. Uh, if I, you said 98, you could be done. Yeah. If I were whisked away by the mountain rapist, uh, I'd be fucked. I, I have zero... Literally! Th- well, and figuratively. Mostly literally. I mean, yes. <laughs> sure, he is a mountain rapist. Maybe if you kind of like, you got it there and you're like, well, would you like some tea? He's like, I don't know, are you going to start raping? Like, no, that's just a figure of speech. <laughs> I raped the shit out of this tea, though. (laughs) (laughs) I just can't imagine any scenario where rapist is a figure of speech. Oh, you know. I just live up here in the mountains, and, uh... It started about 30 years ago. Someone came up and said hello, and, and they, they made a, I made some tea for them. And uh, they were like, well, man, you raped the shit out of that tea. So why did you whisk me away, sir? I get lonely. <laughs> but not and also, I want to rape if, me. I want to see if I still got it, tea-wise. <laughs> oh, no, don't get me wrong. This is delicious tea, but again, you, you did you? kidnap me, and your name <laughs> is the Mountain Rapist. Uh, technically, my first name's Mountain. <laughs> Mountain Jones, pleasure to meet you. Mountain Jones, the rapist. <laughs> you know how nicknames stick? Well, what are you going to do? Anyway, <laughs> I guess I'll chloroform you and return you to your home. Um, <sighs> Mountain Jones, rapist, TDS. <laughs> uh... <sighs> So, all right, so yeah, I'd be terrible. I mean, I am terrible. I don't know what I'm going to get, and, and I've relied now. I, I've been um, I've been more uh, prone to, to not getting everything done because, A, for the first time in many, many years, I have money to actually buy things, mm. where normally, for some reason, I was quicker to buy things when I didn't have money because <laughs> it was like, listen, i got to put this all on credit anyway. So, like, uh. let me just get it done. Ah! <laughs> like, Did you buy, like, ch- cheaper things? Or you bought, like, basically the same stuff you just put stuff. on credit? Yeah, because I'm a horrifying money manager. And yeah. also, like, what I've done to enable my shitty money habits mm-hmm. is just say, listen, you are in a high-risk, high-reward business being on the Internet, especially with the, with the, you know, the kind of stuff that I, was, that I was doing before and I'm still doing now. So it's like, at some point, this is all down payment, and, and you're going to make a bunch of money, and you're going to be able to wipe out all this debt. 
which by and large has actually happened. <laughs> but it was it was because I got the job at the Go Game. Right. Uh, and also other things like now online stuff has made more money yeah. for me this year than it, than it has previous, unless you're Uncle Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, riddle me this: like, yeah. what what uh, section of people do you need to still buy gifts for, or is it all of them? Like, mom, brother, girlfriend, uh-huh. uh, everybody else. <laughs> and do you also, have any plans in place, or you're literally just like groping around in the darkness that is Christmas time? No, I'm figuring that like there's gonna be a solid like, especially now, um, like because we're not working as much, like yeah. That I, there's just going to be a solid six hours one day where I'm just going to be like, yep, boom, 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 knock it all out. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. And also, because I'm not going home, I'll just be able to get that shit gift wrapped on Amazon ah. and just have it set right out. So I, I don't got to worry about that turnaround. Yeah. That's awesome. That's the way to go. Like, you're winning. Who cares? So Why you would say you yeah. would say that this is I, it's not a bad habit. No, if you have, if you know that you're going to set aside six hours and knock out everything and then not have to work, that's six. That is efficient, is all it is. Well, it's also like not real. <laughs> like, you know, like I don't know. I I I'm saying. So where's to the myself, problem? You have the cash to spend the money on the gifts this year. Yeah. You know who you have to buy for. You yeah. know where you're going to buy it. You may not know yeah. exactly what you're going to buy, and you know how you're going. I to I know that everything I buy people. will be Amazon Prime. Yeah. Yeah. You win. How right? is this the problem? You may be better at Christmas shopping I than I am. I feel bad about myself. Why? Because there's fuckers like you who are done already. Uh, that's you could be enjoying tea at the Mountain Rapist Den. Uh, but I wasn't enjoying it. No over problem the here, of this Mountain week. Rapist. Another cup of tea, please. Do you have an you, Earl Grey? You are the S out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing with the Mountain Rapist. You guys are exchanging tales. And yet, at the end, he's still like. Uh, well, it's been a great evening. Uh, time to rape. <laughs> like, at the end, he's like... He starts ambling over you. Like, oh, more tea? No. <laughs> but there is going to be some A. <laughs> Your A. And he starts ambling over, and then, boom! Mountain lion! <laughs> Through the window! <laughs> and luckily, the... you're the only guy prepared uh, with a gun. Uh, he starts tearing his throat out, like, the mountain lion just covered in blood. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the gun on him, and the mountain lion says to you, But I saved your life! <laughs> and then you realize you somehow are still chloroformed and having a fever dream based on that last episode of Davy and Goliath you watched. Because you watch a lot of episodes of Davy and Goliath. And you're like, well, like, I don't know if he was going to kill me. He was just going to rape me. <laughs> well, then I saved you from being raped? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Too slow, ML. <laughs> Too slow. Oh, man. Uh, amazing. All the insight you have into my early life. So there we go. <laughs> Christmas shopping. Christmas shopping. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. How long have we gone here? I feel like, uh, oh, we're at 43 minutes. Um, I'll tell you what, let's open it up to, uh, to questions here in the chat room. Ask any question that you want to me or Brett, uh, germ 24, Jerry, did you get your tree yet? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I got the tree right after, uh, I did last week's live stream with Brett and, uh, we decorated the fuck out of it. Yeah. It was awesome. It was good. We will like put on the entire series of, uh, South Park Christmas specials. Oh my gosh. Watched a lot of mountain lions. Holy shit. They're, I'll tell you, South Park always is just. It's staggering. Like, at some point, South Park's going to end, and we're all just going to have to look at that that breadth of work and say, this has been maybe the greatest work of comedy ever. If if South Park weren't around right now, is there anyone that you could point to right now that is doing a comparable job? To what? I mean, like, you could say that there have been seasons funnier than South Park, easily. Mm-hmm. You can say that there have been on there shows on longer than South Park, mm-hmm. easily. I don't think you can say that there has been a show that's been as consistently funny for as long as South Park at all. And I don't know if we'll ever see that ever again. I'm very optimistic, but I, I can't think of anything besides it would be maybe rare. like Archer that would be even trying. And Archer is not nearly as topical, obviously, as like uh, South, South Park, Park is. Yeah. All uh, right, next question. Yeah, so there we go. 
Um, is there a new creepy Santa, or is there no creep in Christmas this year? Uh, no, there's no. Well, <laughs> uh, there's just, of course, the annual visit from old <laughs> Mountain Rapist. We have the uh, the Go Game mountain Christmas rapist party is tonight. Here. That might get very creepy. <laughs> that would be a mountain rapist Christmas carol. A mountain rapist Christmas carol. You have to leave tea out of, out of, <laughs> here's, here's what you do for mountain rapist. You have to leave Christmas. a tea bag. It's all about the tea bag. You leave you leave uh well no here here's follow me. So yeah. you you leave tea out mm -hmm. and then mountain rapist breaks into your house. <laughs> so like when kids are like when parents are, like trying to make their kids believe that mountain yeah. rapist has come. They like bust they out a window. window. <laughs> And then Mountain Rapist uh, tries your tea, uh -huh. and then uh, if, or here, pretend like you're a sleeping child. Okay. You rape the shit out of that tea! <laughs> ah! And then he jumps out the window. And then your dad busts in, screams, Mountain Lion! Boom! And then you're, dead child. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because he screamed, blood-curdling scream, like a mountain lion cry. cry. And he thought that the mountain lion the was child sleeping? Did. Was no, sleeping? the child did. Maybe. I don't know what mountain lions do in their spare time during mountain rapist season. <laughs> Miss Ula says, I'm not leaving tea out this year. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, oh, Creepy Santa. So, yeah, no, I... I think Creepy Santa is still with Petey Rave, uh, the Turntable Slave in Miami, which is where I left him. Uh, no Creepy Santa this year, uh, mainly because there's not a lot of outdoor decorations for this apartment. So that's where Creepy Santa would go, although he never did go outside. I bought him, and he lived in my room, <laughs> which was extraordinarily creepy. And eventually that was that was vetoed uh, by who I will euphemistically refer to as incoming talent. <laughs> Uh, and there'll be more to talk about that, actually, later. Um, oh, Lonely.Geek might have him now. I think PD didn't take him back from DragonCon. Oh, wow, okay, awesome. So Lonely.Geek has him. So pass through Lonely.Geek for pictures of Creepy Santa, because tis the season to be creepy. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Atari Nerd uh, asks, what does the mountain rapist leave under your tree? All right, so if we're following through on the same premise, you leave tea. Yeah. He tastes the tea. And then he creepily approves whispers. or disapproves? Yeah, whispers. Uh, so if he disapproves, then he probably, uh, like, my immediate assumption was that he shits in a stocking, but that's probably not necessarily true. <laughs> I mean, also, there's the biological questions with that. Yeah. Like, how much shit does he really have? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like Santa. It's magic. Like, he has to visit all of the kids in one night, the mountain rapist. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, this is not scientific. What if it's not kids? What if it's something else? Like, what if it's, like, it's for, like, adults or people in their 20s or something? That's really good. Like, it's for anyone that still has student debt. Gets <laughs> visited by the mountain rapist. By the mountain rapist. <laughs> and so, like, so if, so if he doesn't like your tea, he leaves, like, uh, like... The phone number of the debt collector in your <laughs> No, he just scrolls how much you still owe on your wall. NT, <laughs> like stains the walls with the number you still owe. That's amazing. Yeah. So the mountain rapist. Of course, if you still have student debt, <laughs> the, mountain yeah, rapist the mountain rapist. Because if you still have some student debt, Mountain Rapist is coming tonight. Oh, here comes Mountain Rapist. Here comes Mountain Rapist right down Mountain Rapist Lane. It's good. That was good. I like that. <laughs> Smearing tea upon your walls for boys and girls again. This is good. What time of year does the Mountain Rapist visit? I, it's got to be Christmas. Christmas? I mean, I mean like, you don't think it's like, uh, like around, uh, like uh, graduation time, like a, a reminder, a big old kick, kick in the face, like, oh, you graduated six years ago, but no. you still have this student debt, eh? No, 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 because that's you're warned about mountain rapists when you graduate. Uh huh. So it's like, uh, so it's like when 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 you graduate and you're like, you look at that, you first look at that fucking Sally May bill, and you're like, mm -hmm. holy shit, that's when you think like. I gotta pay this off, or else mountain rapist is coming. 
<laughs> I also like to think that he has like no mercy whatsoever. Like you graduated in June, here comes mountain rapist season, and it's like, <laughs> like I just graduated, I don't even have a job yet. I'm like, that's delicious tea you made, honey. <laughs> so all right, so he he looks at your. Uh, your payback habits, mm-hmm. and says, like, well, like... No, he doesn't. No mercy. Oh, really? There's debt. Mountain rapist comes. Well, then, then there's no positive... Inter- <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say the phrase, then wait, there's no positive interaction with mountain rapist? <laughs> it's the always posi- a negative? The positive interaction is you make great tea, and then he leaves you be. Even if you have student debt? Yeah, he's not gonna. No, no, no. So he's not just like, like you're still owed ten thousand. Like rather than checking a list and making it twice, or making a list and checking it twice, he makes the list and then checks on his T. And if like the T is the line between naughty and nice. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there come we go. on. <laughs> I can't believe how earnestly I explained that to you. <laughs> no, Justin, <laughs> this is how the mountain rapist works. <laughs> Oh, my God. All right, one more question, and then we're going to get out of here. Uh, we have a big Go Game Christmas party here coming up mm-hmm. a little bit later tonight. <laughs> On the gossip. Here, I'll try to, re- I'll try to do it. Oversteeped! Uh, Brett Jury, can you tell ASA about the T for Bowdoin's policy, please? Who's, who's ASA? Um, <laughs> Pete Alahenti, of course, very, very happy uh, wage slave for Monster.com, says, oh, I should get ready for my office Christmas party. It's scheduled for never. <laughs> One day, Pete Alahenti is going to leave his job, for which uh, has been a constant source of consternation for him, and I, we will all be happy. We will all feel the weight of the Internet lesson. Um... <laughs> I'm not. I shouldn't be surprised, but obviously all of the questions coming up right now are about the mountain rapist. Mountain <laughs> rapist seems to be a very popular guy. Uh, he's. Uh, all right. You want to know what, folks? Uh, I will. Uh, let, let's wrap it up right here. Thank you to everybody who came uh, and and watched the show today. If you want to, um, I'll say me and Brett will tweet up. If we were talking about the tree. If you want to see the tree, follow us on Twitter at Justin R Young. At Amtrekker, that is A M T R E K K E R, uh, and and you can get all that stuff. It's gonna be hilarious. Uh, until next week, what happens between now and next week? Probably not a lot. Nothing important. Oh, uh, Christmas special, NSFW Christmas special. Oh, not awesome. on Tuesday, but on Friday, we are doing the live Christmas special featuring Brian and featuring a live performance by Andrew Bancroft with an original. Christmas song for you. So get all up into the Christmas spirit this Friday on the NSFW Christmas special. No episode on Tuesday. Um, all right. That about wraps it up. Uh, until next week, ladies and gentlemen, I do ask you very, very honestly and earnestly to please don't die.